the Slavia or the voters, that front end does look hot. These sort of countries, well, they are going to present themselves a lot more often than before. In fact, I have one for you today. Toyota has just launched the Glanza in India and the buyer in the premium hatchback segment is confused. Should they opt for the Bolino or go with the Glanza itself? Now, I'll try and make it a little simpler for you, so stick around. Now, before we pick one of the two, let's just see what Toyota is offering with their latest. A simple, non-complex answer to that is they're offering everything that the Bolino has. So it gets the same platform, the same dimensions, the same interiors, the same features, the same gearbox, and even the same engine. Speaking about engines, Toyota has not even bothered to change the name of the engine. So it's called the K-Series in a Maruti, which is fine, acceptable, but it's also called a K-Series in a Toyota. What? So what you get is a car that sits on the Haptec platform, weighs roughly about 950 kilos, gets a naturally aspirated K12N engine that produces the same power as before, 89 HP and 113 newton meters of torque. However, it ditches out on mild hybrid technology. You also get really good fuel efficiency, which is being claimed of 22 kmpl and upwards. Phenomenal. Just like the Bolino, in the Glanza, you have two transmission options. You can have it with a five-speed manual, or else you can have it with a 5-speed AMT. So, the AMT is what replaces the CVT. And I know what you're thinking, why has Toyota gone a step backwards, right? I guess two reasons to that. One, cost effectiveness, and second, in the pursuit of more efficiency, because we all know AMTs are a lot more efficient than CVT transmissions. The gearbox might not be the most exciting. Agreed. But once you do step inside the Glanza, you will be greeted to an all-new dashboard layout and those are the sort of things that would excite the typical premium hatchback buyer. So you get a new dashboard layout, there are new colors that are being used, new textures, new finish and the fit and finish level has gone up as well as we've seen with the Bellino. In terms of the features, you get the standard suite, what you can expect from a premium hatchback of today's day and age. The Glanza goes a step ahead by offering you a 360-degree camera. However, the feed on the screen isn't the clearest and it also offers a heads-up display, which does offer a lot of information for the driver. But the question is, does the typical buyer need all that information in front of them? I don't think so. Top variants on the Glanza will also come with an all-new 9-inch infotainment system that gets Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's wired, not wireless, but still it's a great addition to have. The screen, it does look really slick. We've uh, seen its response time to be very impressive with the Bolino and we expect the same with the Glanza when we will be driving it, so stay tuned for that. Now, something that I would like to point out, the Hyundai i20, which could be considered as a benchmark in this segment, gets electric sunroof, which the Bolino or the Glanza skip on. They also skip on wireless charging. And while none of the cars in the segment offer front ventilated seats, I think they would have been a really welcome addition. Dimensions of the Glanza have been changed as well as compared to the car that it replaces. But it is now shorter by 5 mm and lower to the ground by 10 mm. Very minute changes, something that the normal eye would not pick. Now to the thing that actually sets these cars apart. It's the face. That is right, both of these cars have very distinctive styling on the front end. And I'm looking at the Glanza here, and I think the Glanza, it gets a better, more aggressive face as compared to the Bolino, which goes down the sophisticated and slightly luxurious look. The Glanza, it's specially designed by Toyota engineers, so as per what the press release has to say anyways. And sure, I agree with the, you know, the styling because it is very much in line with the rest of the Toyotas that we have seen globally. And I do think that the Glanza looks like a baby Corolla. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Apart from this, what sets both of these cars apart are the standard warranties that are being offered. With the Maruti Bolino, you get a 2-year, 40,000km coverage. But with the Toyota Glanza, you get a 3-year, 1,000,000km coverage, which is substantially more than what you get with the Maruti. Now, this could be a very important factor in deciding which car you should be opting for. The Toyota Glanza has been launched at Rs 6.39 lakhs, with the top variant being priced at Rs 9.69 lakhs making it 5,000 to 20,000 rupees more expensive than a similarly specced Bolino. Which brings us to the question, should you opt for the Bolino or the Glanza? 
honestly buy the one that suits your eye better because looks are what sets both these cars apart nothing else nothing else in fact the bigger concern for me is are manufacturers robbing away their own individual charm in the process of standardizing engines platforms gearboxes i mean here we are expecting a toyota badged car to behave and drive exactly like a maruti like a suzuki badged car what has happened to the world which brings me to the question did you watch drive to survive season 4 i did and i found it really amazing let me know in the comments below also while you're there just tell me if you would pick the balino or the glanza drop it all in the comments below and i'll see you around next time like that done okay. oh say it